Hello, welcome back to another episode of Leslie's Pool School Pro Tips. I'm Phil O'Haver, and this is John Martin. Hello. Together we have over 30 years experience in the swimming pool industry, and today we wanna to spend a little bit more time on talking about... Shocking. Shocking, the importance of shock in the pool. So a lot of questions have been coming in through mm -hmm. Leslie's blog on, you know, why shock the pool, when to shock the pool, maybe even what, what types shocking? of shock the pool, and then what is shocking just in general, right? So we wanna really first understand why we need to shock a pool, right? So we yes. first have to understand, you know, there's a, a lot of basal load that can get into the water, right? So what happens in any swimming pool is that chlorine is floating around, your chlorine tablets, even some liquid chlorine. Or something salt out system. There, salt system, any type of chlorine put into the water is wanting to go sanitize and attack bacteria, attack different things in water. Well, a couple things that it can't really attack, it actually bonds to is ammonias and nitrates in the water. And those come from a variety of sources between oh, debris, bird dropping, an animal dropping yeah. in the pool. I mean, just bathal or lotion, sunscreens, cosmetics, all of that kind of stuff. So what happens, chlorine will actually bond with it. And the only way for you to release that bond is going to be, you guessed it, shocking that pool. So we need to reach what we call a breakpoint chlorination to raise that chlorine level up at a really high level for a period of time and drop it back down to ensure that you're burning off all those contaminants out of the water, burning the contaminants into the atmosphere, releasing it up, and turning that combined chlorine back into useful, effective chlorine. Yeah, and it's, it's important to understand that you know, chlorine that's combined with ammonia is not effective at all. I mean, it, it is not killing things. So, you know, if you smell chlorine, actually, you know, odor, odor chlorine is bad. It is combined with ammonia. So, I hate to say it, but you, I mean, you go to some of the public pools, probably in your childhood or even now, and you smell this chlorine, you go, oh, it smells clean. The exact opposite was true yeah. of that. It was not opposite. a safe environment. You might want to stay away from that. Right, which is why <laughs> consumers should be super chlorinated. They should be oxidizing. They should be shocking. All three of those things I just said are the same word. Super chlorinate oxidizing, shocking, all through the same thing. This is why you need to. Our information from some of our partners out there that says, was it 80 something percent of, of 80, customers? 80 yeah. percent of customers of, of local pool owners mm -hmm. actually under shock their pool. So to be on a regular uh, regimen of yep. shocking your pool or super chlorinating the pool, and, and if you refer to one of our last videos that we shot on really the importance of sanitizing, we talked a little bit more about you know the combination of shocks too. So you can get you know one of the chlorine-based shocks on one week, yep. another week you can actually balance that out with a non-chlorine shock, but both of those chlorine and non-chlorine shocks are both oxidizing contaminants out of the water, oxidizing that bad molecule combined with that combined chlorine. Well, and I'll tell you, the secret sauce, because how do you know when to do that? Right. A test kit. Test. Test. Yes. test kits. I, I, I caution all customers who shop with us, or anywhere, if, if you own a pool, you shouldn't just be adding chemicals each week because you're used to it. You should be testing. So if you're testing the water uh, and you see, hey, you know, my chlorine level is, my free chlorine is a two, but my total chlorine is a three, that gap between there, that two and three, that's one part per million of combined available chlorine, which or chloramine, which, so yes, is, which is the stinky chlorine, the bad chlorine. Actually, some people are a little more sensitive to chloramines. My daughter's one of them, she can't, if there's chloramines in a pool, she gets a rash. A lot of skin eye irritation yep. as well when you can smell that. Yeah. yeah, so when you see that, you know that you need to oxidize that water. Two different ways you can go about doing it. Breakpoint chlorinating, which you talked about. So that's just math. I mean, it's pretty easy. We can do it for you at collar stores or whatever. We can tell you how much chlorine to add. Or the much simpler approach is a non-chlorine oxidizer, if your chlorine level is appropriate. So if your chlorine level is between that two to four range and it's in the appropriate range, then use a non-chlorine oxidizer like our Fresh and Clear. Fresh and Clear. Toss that in there and it will oxidize off those contaminants will burn out all that ammonia, and then you'll go back and test, and you'll see that your free chlorine and your total chlorine are the same, which is the ideal. You always want those to be the same. But test, 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 because you if you add chlorine every, you know, every week, the exact same dose over and over and over again, you may just be dumping chlorine in there and not getting the bang for your buck. You're probably wasting money. Yes. Um, but yeah, my dad, for example, I help maintain his pool. He uses a dichlor, and he uses fresh and clear. And he uses fresh and clear more often than he does the dichlor because there's not a lot of demand in his pool. There's not a heavy beta load. There's not a, so he's just constantly oxidizing. He'd be, he's, he's amazed at how much he saves as compared to what he did five years ago, which was he had tablets floating, he'd add shock, he'd pour a little splash of acid without ever testing. Mm -hmm. He says he spends a third of what he used to spend mm -hmm. by simply testing it and understanding what he's adding and why. 
so John, to your point with your dad, I mean, it's it's a huge, a huge advantage when you talk about a chlorine based shock versus a non chlorine shock yep. and how they balance uh, uh, one another out. Um, commercial properties love that chlorine free shock. It's our yep. fresh and clear, right? It's a monoprosulfate based uh, powdered and, shock. And it does some clarifying. And it does a very good job of clarifying. I think I referenced it in the last video we mm -hmm. said, but I always recommend for customers if you try this stuff out, do the lights, do the light test. So at nighttime, turn that light on. If your light doesn't work, call our service department. We get that fixed for you too, right? And we'll turn the number on the bottom. Yeah, right turn here. the yeah, turn the yeah, right here. <laughs> turn the light on, and uh, you'll see some particulate floating around in front of that light. Okay, turn that filter on, that pump on, get it going. Put the recommended dosage of that fresh and clear in there. Let that filter for a couple hours. Go back out, turn that light on. And in front of that light, that water is going to be just crystal, crystal clear. The nice thing is too, it's almost a shock and swim, right? It's 15 minutes, you gotta stay out of that pool for it to be put into there. So it's a great partner, a great complement to your chlorine-based shocks. And a lot of times, if you're floating tabs out there and they hit it with an occasional uh, chlorine-based shock, you may only need to be putting that chlorine-based shock in on a very rarely basis, as John mentioned, and supplementing that with that fresh and clear that's out there. So I think that fresh and clear is just really missing from a lot of backyard oh, uh, customers. From their um, pantry, right? From the pantry, yep, yeah, yeah, absolutely. They, they don't product. have it. Radically underutilized. And I don't want I don't want to make this a plug about fresh and clear. I mean, so I, I think it's important we just sort of you know circle back and understand that. Well, we strongly recommend you have a uh, non-chlorine shock in your backyard. Obviously, Fresh and Clear is our brand, so we know it's a superior product, but you wanna have a non-chlorine oxidizer back there and use it regularly, but test, 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 mm -hmm. test, uh, so you know how much to add. Don't, don't waste money, and more importantly, <laughs> don't have an unsafe swimming environment. You could have a high chlorine level and you can smell it and you're like, yes, I got a ton of chlorine in there and it's still not safe. So it's critically important that you understand the importance of shocking and that you test before swimming or adding any chemicals. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't have one of the test kits at home that like we, we sell at Leslie's, you can pick them at a lot of different places. So if you look at this OTO kit, this OTO kit just tests for the total chlorine in the water, which is you know the good and bad chlorine combined together. You so know, it doesn't so tell you when to shock? No, it doesn't. So you have your DPD kit here here that actually tests for your good and bad chlorine that's out there. So um, if you don't have one of these kits, you can pick one up. Um, a lot of places carry it, but if you bring it into Leslie's, we do the full nine point test and we're able to go ahead and, and provide you the solutions on how much shock you may need to reach that break point chlorination if you do have some of that combined chlorine that's in the water. Yeah, our, our water test system is really sophisticated, so it'll do the math for you. Um, there's also calculators online on our blog. There's some calculators there to figure out breakpoint chlorination. You can also use test strips. Um, I, I tell you, test strips are, are reasonably accurate, but you just need to make sure that you keep them indoors, don't store them outside. And I recommend you replace them every six months, uh, mm -hmm. just because, you know, depending on how they're stored or if water got in there, but I re recommend replacing them every six months, but it is a viable option to, to testing if you don't want to do the drops. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully this answered some questions for you. Uh, if you have any additional questions, please go to our blog. I know you know how to get there because you're already there watching this video. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't hesitate to submit questions. That email address that you see there actually comes to our inbox. Yep. Uh, so you will get a reply from us and or you may see your question hosted as, as one of our Pro Tips videos. So thank you for watching. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. That's all the time we have for today and we'll uh, see you guys real soon. Bye now. Bye.